In this video, we'll prepare a full cash and GPP lineup on the main slate for FanDuel for week seven, and it's coming up next. Hello, everyone. I'm Eric Lay. And I'm Michael Wiley, and we're the Fantasy Football Consultants. Eric, another crazy game, week of games. But you know what? We got a lot to do, so let's get right to it. Let's get in the studio. Okay, Eric, as usual, I think we should start at the running back position. And you look here, you see the highest priced guy is Austin Eckler at $9,500. And there is good reason for that. Look what he has done week in and week out. Yes, a big part of that has been uh, his involvement in the passing game, which is not quite as valuable as you know on FanDuel as it is on some of the other point uh you know ppr uh places but he is going up uh against uh one of the worst i think the 31st worst worst defense in the league against running backs both on the ground uh and not so great in the air as well uh and we talked about it on our other show uh, we think Keenan Allen could be back, and that actually could be something good for Austin Eckler because it could keep some of these drives alive that they struggled against Denver against. Um, but I don't think they're going to have the struggles they had against Denver regardless because they're going to get up against the Seattle Seahawks. Eric, what do you think about Austin Eckler? Yeah, wow, times have changed. Austin Eckler is the is way at the top, and look what where Christian McCaffrey is, and look where uh, – Jonathan Taylor is so it's very interesting but it's not just how great Austin Eckler is it's it's the matchup folks I don't it's hard home to Detroit home to Seattle <laughs> probably the two best potential uh matchups I'll tell you another matchup that's pretty good how about at 8,400 look who Leonard Fournette draws uh he draws the Carolina Panthers and their weak rush uh, defense. They are monster 11-point favorites. You love that, of course, anytime you have a, a running back. So the game script is going to be in his favor. So he might not get the whopping uh, 11 targets, but he's going to be involved in the passing game. It is so clear that the, the, the Tampa Bay Bucks have decided that they're going to rely on him. The fact that he got six targets and 11 targets the last two games when all of their wide receivers were healthy shows that they're going to highlight him in the run game and the pass game. We can't go Cooper Cup. He's not on the main slate. But Debo Samuel might just match what we could get out of Cup given the fact that I think San Francisco is going to be in full passing mode to try to keep up with the Kansas City Chiefs uh, this week. So uh, love the implied total of 48 and a half. Kansas City's pass defense has not been good this year. So, uh, and I love the consistency that Debo Samuels has shown this year. It's actually time for him to have a real breakout game. The Niners know getting his hands on the ball is a good thing, especially around the goal line. It hasn't happened consistently this year like it has in the past. I think so, that this is the, the week for it. Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, he gets this – look at the floor he has. He gets consistent touches, not just in the passing game, but also in the running game. It's time for him to get in the end zone a couple of times. I like this, uh, this matchup for him. Great pick uh, at $7,700. And you know who else is $7,700 right alongside him? Uh, CeeDee Lamb, who might get his quarterback back. And even if he doesn't, he's been the number one target there. Uh, he's really a special talent and has a nice matchup this week uh, that should allow him to produce towards the higher end of his range. We've, you know, a couple of, uh, of tough games, game one against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, and then that Rams game. Um, but other than that, high performer, um, really high floor. And I think if you get uh, Dak Prescott back, it could be a really big week for him. Yeah, I just love facing having wide receivers and quarterbacks that face Detroit. Not only because their defense is bad, but but I think their offense will stay in the game. And they're coming off a bye, and I'm hoping that their offensive players get healthy. Amon Ross St. Brown, I think, was playing while still hurt. He's got two weeks to recover, so hopefully he is at 100% health. 
and we might get Swift back this this week. So I'm hoping for a shootout here. So we got to save a little bit more money in this last spot, um, but not, you know, let's let's make sure we get a number one guy. Uh, let's pick on another bad defense. Let's pick on the Washington Commanders. Alan Lazard at $6,600. Uh, clearly Green Bay, uh, Aaron Rodgers, number one target. Yeah, they're coming off a tough week, but even in that tough week, Rodgers got the ball to Lazard. Uh, that's his guy. Uh, again, kind of a consistent performer uh you know uh not only in terms of targets but uh just what he's producing from a fantasy perspective and he's really Aaron Rodgers guy at the goal line right now uh which is why you're seeing him get in the end zone so consistently what do you think yeah oh, uh, Lazard's great I'm just looking at this number over here Michael that's just going to be interesting we have an average of five thousand dollars so we I'm just uh we're definitely going to have to save some money but I love this lineup so far these five guys are going to have to carry this lineup. And uh, the only other comment I have to say about Lassard is that of all of Aaron, of Aaron Rodgers' targets, I truly believe he's the one that Rodgers trusts the most. Washington cannot stop anybody this year on defense, especially in the passing game. We see they're 28th against wide receivers. So I like that pick for the $6,600. All so right. you, you said it. We've spent all this money. I'll, I'll let you go to the quarterback position and save us a few bucks. Oh, yeah? I might mutiny and pick Lamar Jackson. Uh -huh. uh, I'm joking, but Lamar Jackson is someone that we did like this week. And if you want to pay down on one of the these five guys and go Lamar Jackson, so be it. However, for the savings, we can save $2,000 off Lamar Jackson. And we get a guy who I'll call Lamar Jackson Light, because <laughs> he does his Lamar Jackson impersonation, just not as well. Uh, Geno Smith this year, we've talked about in the, in the past shows how accurate he's been, uh, completion percentage, really high pro football focus, passing grade. We like that. Um, the fact that he did very poorly last week really wasn't his fault. I mean, he was 20 for 31. So once again, good completion. He did run the ball. The problem was he didn't throw a touchdown pass because they scored 19 points. They had a rushing touchdown and four field goals. So they're not going to get a four field goals a lot. And also they played from ahead. So they simply did not pass much. That was the same situation um, when uh, they, they faced uh, San Francisco and Denver. That's why those numbers were below. But when it's been more shootout, when they've been behind, that's when the, the, the passing yards come. And I think playing at the Chargers, who might well, as we said, have Keenan Allen back, they should be behind. And that should force Geno Smith to throw. Yeah, and so he's produced really well in those situations. I think it, it'll happen again. I think that's a great pick with where we are from a dollar's perspective. But it doesn't leave us really anything left. So a guy we've been talking about since Monday night, we watched that game closely since uh, you're such a Russell Wilson fan, is this guy, uh, Dulcich out of UCLA. He missed the first five weeks because of a hamstring injury. He's a rookie. Uh, he, some say he may be the fastest tight end in the league. I think that's a little bit hard to believe. But he showed some impressiveness in his, his first outing. He's $4,000, so you can't go any cheaper than that on FanDuel. Uh, Greg Dulcich uh ignore the hair and the mustache he's he's a speed demon and i think russell wilson who likes his tight end targets uh is going to go there this game uh what do you think i like greg dulcich not just the fact that we can save four thousand dollars this is a guy that was really highly thought of in the preseason he got the the hamstring in injury and wiped out most of his preseason and he didn't play up until this past week he would not be at the $4,000 minimum if this game that he played was not on Monday night. They did not know about the Monday night resort, uh, results. So he benefits from the $4,000 salary. Not only was it that he caught two passes for 44 yards, in, including uh, a TD, but this guy, um, he's involved in the offense. 
And this offense needs him. It has struggled more than any other team in the NFL. 71% of the snaps in his very first game, offensive snaps. He's a big-bodied pass catcher, and that's how they're going to, to use him. Michael, I know you've watched this guy all the way back to college. Tell me from a football sense, how talented do you think he is? Yeah, well, he was uh, all Pac-12 uh, tight end uh, list last year. Uh, really, two years in a row, really important for UCLA. Uh, they're missing him this year. Oh, they've got a nice one against USC. A little plug there this last week. Uh, yeah, he's a, he's a big talent. And, you know, Russell Wilson really likes to use a tight end. He actually got missed a couple of times. There was a few times there could have been first downs if, if Russell would, w- Wilson would have seen him. He will not be $4,000 ever again. All right, that leaves us with an average of a little under $5,000 per player. So we're going to pay down on defense. And we wanted to pick somebody in the flex that we felt that gave us a floor. And this is a guy that I am pretty excited we're getting in our lineup. We're getting two Denver Broncos, which is a little scary. Uh, But they're at home, and they are favored by two points over the Jets. And I was shocked to see on Monday night, you know, don't forget, Javante Williams is out for the year, okay? So the the thought was, well, Melvin Gordon is going to uh, take over the lead role. Well, they uh, quickly signed Latavius Murray, and this was the first game that he was active in. And he out-carried Melvin Gordon 15 to 3. He got 15 of the 19 carries, and he looked pretty good back there. So if you're going to tell me he's going to be the lead back, I I ask everybody to please watch the news and try to make sure that you're comfortable that he's going to continue in that role and they don't revert back. But I'm telling you, Melvin Gordon wasn't hurt. Melvin Gordon has spent the last day on Twitter liking all the tweets that say, how how come they benched uh, uh, benched um, Gordon? We think that's unfair. He should go and and uh, and uh, request a trade. So, <laughs> Michael, this could be a mess. But I think Murray's the guy on this team. No, so if you if you've been following this Denver team, Melvin Gordon's has had the, he's had the drops this year. He has been fumbling the ball. Uh, he's had that reputation historically, you know, let's just face it. Melvin Gordon's not the guy he used to be when he was at the chargers back in the day. Uh, so if he's fumbling the football, that's the last thing you can afford. You got to go with somebody who who controls the ball. And I guess Latavius Murray is that guy. I think you're going to see a repeat this week. All right. That leaves us with a whopping $3,300, which means we need to go dumpster diving at, uh, (laughs) at uh, defense, and we've got four candidates. We've got the Seahawks, the Lions, the Texans, and the Falcons. Well, I'm not picking the Texans and the Lions, Um, and I don't like the Seahawks. So by default, I'm going to pick the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, no, I was really impressed with what they did against the Niners um, on both sides of the ball, frankly. They kind of control the line of scrimmage, which – it's kind of hard to, it's pretty hard to do against the Niners on both sides of the ball. So uh, yeah, I mean, like you say, other than that Tampa Bay game, they have, uh, you know, they have played, you know, okay. So uh, we got it. We got a dumpster dive. I think you picked the best piece of trash. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, trash, right? Well, I'll tell you what's trash about this pick. They're dead last in sacks, dead last 30, 32. You don't like that because you want a defense that put pressure on the quarterback. However, they play the Cincinnati Bengals, who have given up 23 sacks this the 22 sacks this year, and that is only one off the most sacks, uh, 23 uh, by any team. So you know what? They they can force some mistakes in this game. As we always say, defense is a little bit of a tra- crapshoot. We're going to pay down a little bit. And that allows us to get the rest of this lineup. Let's go to GPP. All right, on the screen now is our GPP lineup. And we attack it with a stack. And we're choosing the Cowboy Detroit Lion game. And that has a whopping 48 over under. Now, we're assuming that Dak Prescott will be playing in this. Obviously, watch the news. Make sure that's the case. We're going to have Prescott to CeeDee Lamb. 
and run that back with Amon Ross St. Brown. Both of these guys are high ceiling guys. Detroit, in general, when they're healthy, do a really good job in garbage time, it seems. So uh, I really like the ceiling of this stack. Yeah, no, I, I we talked about it in the DraftKings show as well. Uh, I really like this because of uh, the 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 connection that Pascal has with Lamb, uh, and we think that this is going to be a high scoring game. Yeah, and you can go with other stacks from a high, other high scoring games, but you kind of have to break the bank. And this this stack isn't too expensive. It allows us to attack another game, which is high scoring, which is Seattle and the LA Chargers. And we're going to pick probably we think the two weapons that have the most highest upside on both sides, Austin Eckler, who we've already discussed, and DK Metcalf. Now, I'm the first to tell you, without Russell Wilson throwing those deep bombs, Metcalf isn't as dangerous as he has been in the past, but he's still fast and he's still big. So um, he's always a threat to break one. Yeah, and it looks like that's Geno Smith's go-to guy uh, when he's got to get a play. All right, so... I also decided that one more stack, and that is a running back defense stack. You usually want to do that stack for a team that you think will be ahead. And Cincinnati is at home, and they are a solid six-point favorite. So if they get up, you would think Joe Mixon, who we haven't talked about yet, uh, who is really does everything, um, he will, he's the goal line back. Uh, he'll be the bell cow back, and he gets involved in the passing game. He's a guy that we think can give us a high ceiling. And we get the Cincinnati defense, which, uh, which draws the Atlanta Falcons, a very good team to, to draw. They're the 30th uh, against, the, against the pass. Mariota is dynamic. He runs the ball, but he's also susceptible to mistakes. So, Michael, what do you think about the Mixon bingo stack? Yeah, Mixon has been breaking out. Uh, I, I, I like that pick a lot this week. I think the pricing makes a, a lot of sense as well. So I like attacking that game. I feel even though be, having a, being a six-point favorite isn't really a good thing right now going on in the NFL, <laughs> uh, I think this one should hopefully hold. All right. We already talked about why we got Greg Dulcet. He uh, gives us some savings at $4,000. And we're left at $5,800 with James Robinson. So I'll be honest with you, of all of these picks, the one I like the least is James Robinson. And the reason is because he's in a share role with Travis Etienne. But he does face the New York Giants. He's at home and the New York Giants do a very poor job against the rest so far this year. So you, you can see a situation where if they can get up, that there's a scenario where he has a ceiling game. I will say, and then I'll let you comment, that, you know, feel free to pivot for only $200 more if Latavius Murray is got the number one job. I like his ceiling against the Jets uh, a little bit more than James Robinson but you'd have to go down by a hundred dollars somewhere. Um, Michael, what are your thoughts about Robinson? Yeah, no, I, I think that that the balance of that share is moving more towards ETN, but um, you know, I, I think that Robinson still might be the goal line back for the most part. So uh, I like the upside of Robinson with touchdowns. So that's our GPP lineup. When it's available on the screen, we will put our DraftKings analysis for week seven. Until next time, everybody, take care. And be safe.